Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery here. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning, January 12th, 2022. We get together with our distribution partners most weekday mornings at this time, right around eight o'clock central, and spend time talking about strategies, success stories, tips, techniques, but most importantly, we're here to support you. Today is probably one of the most important topics that we could cover because it hits right at the heart of the problem. So let me ask you this. Why do you think, and you can ignore what's on the screen here for a minute, but why do you think that most small businesses do not have access to the capital that they need to start to grow, to reach their potential? What do you think is the underlying problem? Take a moment, if you would, and go ahead and respond in the Zoom question and answer function. It's kind of like a chat box. What do you think is the number one reason why small businesses don't have access to capital that they need to start to grow or to reach their potential? So I'm gonna give you a moment to, to respond. Joseph, you're one of our top white label partners. If you could give us your perspective as a licensed real estate agent. What is the reason? What is the reason that most, because th this comes to the core of why you and I work together, why we do this. What is it that we do? Do we, we help them have a better haircut? Do we have them have shinier shoes? W what is the problem that you and I need to focus on solving as technical advisors. So we've got a number of, of, of good answers. And so certainly we could talk about financial literacy and, and I wouldn't argue that, but at the core of it, I believe the correct answer, the most correct answer is the many of these small businesses do not look credible enough on paper to get approved. And that's really what you and I do. We take small business owners and their businesses and help them move from wherever they are to where they need to be to become credible enough to get funding. Now, you see on the screen, and we've talked about the three C's before, credit, cash flow, and collateral. Credit can fall into two categories, can't it? Personal credit and, and business credit. But we're not going to focus on credit today because credit alone is typically not enough to get material funding. We can't ignore the other two Cs, collateral and capacity, also called cash flow, the ability to pay it back. We have one of our, our white label partners. He's a big hitter. He's been in this space for a long time. He's written a book, very, very successful man. And he, he and I were talking yesterday and he had submitted a client in and for first tranche financing, the client received no offers, no cash offers. And, and the client's got a good credit score. And, and so the referral partner is just astounded. Like, how can this be? I mean, this is, this is hypocrisy. How, how can this be that this, this wonderful woman with great ideas and, and great credit can't get even uh, any cash funding offers. Well, she's missing one of the C's. She has no capacity. She has no cash flow. So why would a lender loan someone money that they can't illustrate that they can afford to pay it back? So what we're going to talk about today is a brand new offering. We just launched it and it's called the Collateral Support Program. This is a big deal, well thought out been in the making for quite a while. This is going to have, I believe, a dramatic effect, a positive effect on your ability to help clients get funding. And also it's gonna add extra cash flow to you, which we'll talk about, of course. So on the left hand of the screen, we're on the business paralegal site. And this is where the program is parked, the collateral support program. But primarily today, we're gonna to work off of this new brochure that was just released to the public this morning. So collateral support program. So let's talk about what this is. What is the collateral support program? The collateral support program was designed by former SBA, SBDC advisors and SCORE mentors to enable financing for small businesses that might otherwise be unavailable due to a collateral shortfall. 
So again, referencing back the three C's, credit, cash flow, capacity, if we don't have collateral, it's very difficult to get larger amounts of funding. Smaller loans, you can sometimes escape that. Let's say typically under 25,000, sometimes up to 40 or 50,000. But if we're looking for larger amounts of funding, the lenders often are concerned about collateral. So it's read on. The program, talking about the collateral support program, supplies a portfolio of potentially revenue producing accounts receivables. And I'll, I'll describe that more so it doesn't seem vague in terms of what does that potentially revenue producing mean. But again, the program supplies a portfolio of potentially revenue producing accounts receivables to the balance sheet of participants while concurrently improving their borrowing capacity with a stronger income statement. So let's dive into that a bit. Income statements and profit and loss statements mean the same thing. They're, they're, they're sometimes interchangeably used, so don't be confused by that. In module three, you and I teach small businesses about balance sheets and income statements. So I suspect that you're very familiar with what's on a balance sheet, right? It's the assets and liabilities of the business. And I'm assuming that you're very familiar with what's on an income statement or profit and loss of a business, revenue and expenses. I, I also suspect that you know that whether that business is one day old or a hundred years old, this still applies. You and I will not fall into the fallacy of, oh, I, the, when the client says, oh, I have a new business, so none of this applies. That's bullshit, right? The lender doesn't know anything about the small business. And if we want business loans, we need to show that we're credible. And part of that is providing a balance sheet and income statement. We talk about this in module three. We've talked about this module three of the, of the client uh, curriculum. We've talked about it other places. Producing financial statements is is normally derived from one of two sources. Either the client goes back to their accountant and says, accountant, please produce me a balance sheet and income statement, or they use their own software. QuickBook, you're gonna hear me refer to QuickBooks. I have no financial interest in QuickBooks. I used to teach it. And that's what I used uh, as uh, part of my entrepreneur curriculum when I was a full-time professor. So when I say QuickBooks, you can generalize that and mean, any small business accounting software. But the point is, where do small businesses get their balance sheets and income statements from? Either their accountant or from their QuickBooks. QuickBooks, it's super simple. You open it up, you click on reports, you click the type of report you want, you may have to select the date range, you save to PDF. Now, if the client's not working with an accountant and the client doesn't use QuickBooks, then we have a problem. That, account, that client really is not ready for a capital raise. They're not able to track their revenue. They're not paying someone else to do it, the accountant, and apparently they're not doing it because they're not using QuickBooks or some related software. They're going to need a balance sheet and income statement in most cases if we're trying to get business funding. Now, if all they want's a personal loan, we can skip all of this, right? But, but that's not what you and I do. We are technical advisors helping entrepreneurs get their position, their business position to be credible enough to get funding. All right, so moving on. Collateral is often required by lenders that offer small business loans. For working capital loans or lines of credit, the amount of collateral support can be determined as the difference between the proposed loan amount and the value that the lender assigns to the working capital assets, such as accounts receivable and inventory. In the event the borrower does not repay the loan, then the lender collects against the borrower's collateral. So if what you and I are doing is helping a client go buy real estate, then that real estate becomes the collateral because just like if you went and got a mortgage, right? You don't pay the mortgage and enough time goes by, they will foreclose on the property and because there's a lien against it. And then they have the property to try to recoup their losses. Same with a car, right? You go buy a car, almost always going to be a lien against the car. You pay the car payments to the financing company. If you don't pay the payment sooner or later, they'll come in the middle of the night, they'll hook it up, they'll sell it, they'll auction it off. The car is collateral. So with that being said, 
For working capital loans, often there's not collateral. So the lender often will look at the balance sheet of the business to see what other assets exist that can be pledged as collateral. And for many of the clients that you and I work with, their balance sheet isn't that strong. So does that mean they can't get funding? Not at all. That means that you and I as technical advisors are helping them move from being less credible to more credible on paper. And that can be done, accomplished through this process. And that's the final sentence here at the top. The collateral support program affordably provides the collateral needed for, small, for many small business loans. Now, included in this packet here, two-page packet, nice and simple. We have some Q&As and we're gonna go through those and then we'll get to any other questions you have because this is a really big deal. This is important, an important resource that, that is unique in the marketplace and I'll describe that more as we go, that you and I can offer clients to help them become more credible so they can get funding and it also generates revenue for you. So they win and you win. It's not a win-lose scenario, it's a win-win scenario. All right, so let's start with the first question. What kinds of businesses and what's the cost of participation? Small businesses enrolled in the Access to Capital program are eligible to participate. And, and I guess if we needed to make an exception, we could, but by default, this is meant to be a resource for Access to Capital clients. Well, you probably like to see that, right? Because what you want are more points of differentiation so you can get more clients enrolled in Access to Capital program, so you're able to generate revenue from that program. And as a white label partner, on average, you're making around $12,500 gross income for each Access to Capital client. The Access to Capital program, of course, guarantees a minimum of 100,000 to start a grow business. To determine a cost, and so now we're talking about the cost of the collateral support program, to determine cost of the collateral support program, a calculation is needed to determine the amount of collateral shortfall. So again, let's say that the client wants 250,000, let's say that 150,000 is to buy some real estate and 100,000 is for working capital. Well, again, what we said is the real estate typically will serve as collateral for that amount. It's the balance of that, that we're needing to make sure that there's collateral shown on the client's balance sheet. So the lender feels comfortable that if the borrower should not repay as agreed, that they have some recourse, they have, have some way to recoup their losses. So it's not just because they need 250,000 that they would need 250,000 new collateral because some of their capital raise may be hard assets, real estate, equipment, what have you, that could be collateralized. Third paragraph, once the shortfall is known, then we'll create a portfolio, a portfolio of debt instruments. And these are valid income producing accounts receivables. Now we're not doing factoring. So please understand, please don't be confused. These are what's called non-performing debt. So they're legitimate executed contracts. There's, there's money owed, these are real. This is not fuzzy, it's not gray but they're currently not performing, which means the clients are not currently paying their bills. If they were, then that asset wouldn't be included in the portfolio. So these are non-performing debts. So frankly, they're worth less than a performing debt, right? If you had someone that owed you $100,000 and they were paying $1,000 every month or whatever the terms were as agreed, you'd probably want right about $100,000 for that. You might discount a little bit to get your money earlier. That's called factoring. Here, we're talking about non-performing debts, people that legitimately and contractually, legally owe money, but they're not paying it as agreed. There's a whole big market. In the past, we called this debt buying and debt portfolios. We've repackaged it, so don't be confused by that. So again, let's read this paragraph again. Once the shortfall is known, a portfolio is constructed of valid, potentially income producing accounts receivables that will be transferred to the client and then put on their balance sheet. 
This very much is solving the problem that you and I talked about. A lot of small businesses do not have enough collateral as shown on their balance sheet to qualify for funding. And this can be a solution to that. Now, are there other solutions? Sure, they can go come up with other assets legitimately and, and truly and put on their balance sheet. But typically that is not going to be feasible for them because the cost of buying the asset probably exceeds their either their borrowing capacity or their willingness to take on debt. So what you and I do is give them more than what they're paying for. So they're getting a magnification of effect. All right, so uh, with that said, the typical price of the collateral support program is 10%. And of course we share this revenue with you and we'll talk about that in a minute. So if the client needs $100,000 of collateral, they're gonna pay 10,000 for the collateral support program. We'll finance most of that. So it's not gonna be a hardship for them. It's revenue shared with you, but we're, we're very clear on the pricing. It's typically 10% of the value. And that's, that's a great deal, right? Because their alternative is to go out and pay 100%. Well, that's exchanging dollar for dollar and that's probably, that's not leverage and that probably won't work for their situation. How is the collateral income producing, you might ask? All of these portfolios are created with one or more accounts receivable files with monies owed in contractual terms that state that there are daily late fees. The daily late fees can be reflected on the client's income statement or profit loss means the same thing using the accrual method of accounting. So let's just use a simple example. So let's say you've got a client and we're working on their loan package and there's an inconsistency between how credible they look on paper and how credible they need to be. They don't have enough collateral to the point. So let's say that you and I help them get set up on just $100,000 of collateral, for example. How much would they pay for that? They would pay 10,000, but we'll finance most of that. So it's not like they have to come up with 10,000 in the pocket. They typically don't have that or won't wanna pay it. So that's, that's fine, we understand that. With that being said, these are income producing receivables. So each of these debt instruments in the portfolio that the client is buying has contractual terms that state daily late fees. And so the client can turn around, go into their QuickBooks or work with their accountant or however they're tracking their revenue and expenses and then start capturing that revenue. So using the accrual method of accounting, which means we, we post revenue when it's earned, not necessarily when it's received, every day, the client's cash flow is building. And that's important because that's another one of the three C's. It's kind of a secondary benefit, right? We're primarily working on the C of collateral, but concurrently, we're helping them with the other C of cash flow, also called capacity, because now their income statement is going to show that they actually have income generated for their business or, or more income generated. Is financing available? As, as we mentioned a moment ago, yes, absolutely. We have guaranteed financing available. So the client is going to put a thousand dollar down payment. We're going to share that with you, of course, and it's going to get some money in your pocket right away. Uh, they need to come up with a thousand dollars. There's time and effort and packaging this up We'll get the financing for the rest, but they do need to come up with $1,000. And again, the balance is, is guaranteed financing regardless of their credit or, or verifiable income. So everyone will get approved for the financing of the balance. They do need to come up with $1,000 for the portfolio. Okay, and then we ask the question, why would a small business wanna participate in a collateral support program? Well, as we've been stating, Many, sorry, many lenders require collateral to protect themselves in case the borrower does not repay as agreed. Furthermore, many small business borrowers do not have adequate collateral for loan approval. So this is a national issue. This isn't just something clever that we thought up. You know, you know the, the SBA, the, the, the federal government, lenders understand this, this is a key problem, but you and I have a unique and profitable solution that is a win-win. It's great for the client, 
and it's great for you because it's another revenue stream. Plus, it's helping move the client forward in becoming more fundable, which ultimately gets you paid off the access to capital program. The collateral support program uniquely provides potentially income producing collateral for only a small fraction of the book value of the underlying assets. We talked about 10 cents on the dollar. And now sometimes people will ask, well, what happens afterwards? Well, the, the asset is then owned by the client. And so that portfolio, that portfolio of debt instruments. And so the client could hold on to that. It'll continue to grow because of the late fees. The client could uh, collect on it uh, by invoicing the, 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 the debtor. They could uh, place it with a collection agency. They could place it with a, a contingency only attorney. They could litigate it themselves through small claims court, or um, they, they could just re resell it to uh, frankly, another debt buyer is the technical term. So there's several options. It's, it's a true asset. Just like if, if the small business bought a piece of equipment, they could either keep it and get the benefits out of it, or they could sell it. What sizes of loans can be obtained using collateral? Well, uh, the collateral support program is flexible. As I mentioned earlier on, we'll need to look at the client situation to figure out how much collateral shortfall they have, because that's what we're trying to do is cover the shortfall. But we'll do a minimum of 100,000. It's just not worth us to, to do the paperwork for less than that. And then the maximum is 20 million for each individual loan. But again, we'll, we'll work with them to figure that out. And then more information, and it refers to the collateral support page of Business Paralegal. So here, we give a, a quick overview, and then we let them know if they fill out this form, then we'll give them, we'll send them the free collateral support information packet. All right, so what I want to do now is get over to your questions, comments, concerns, because this is a big deal. What you and I do as technical advisors is we help small businesses become more credible. And to become more credible, if they want to borrow money, or frankly, even if they want equity-based uh, capital money that they don't have to pay back, it's relevant for them to be as credible as they can on paper. And an element of that is having a strong balance sheet. All right, so I'm going to get into your questions. I need to dismiss the, the responses you all had to our little survey. So give me a second. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, we'll go through that. Clear up, uh, find. Okay, so David's asking about the financing. So the financing for the collateral support program is monthly pay. And it does report as a new positive trade line, a primary trade line. So that is uh, very positive. Okay, who else has questions on this? All right, Carlos is asking about the revenue split. So that's right. If you're a white label partner, then we do the normal 50-50 revenue split. If you're not a white label partner, you can still refer people in and we'll do a revenue share. It just, it won't be 50-50. This was primarily developed for our white label partners to be able to better assist their clients in moving from where they're at to becoming more credible, more fundable. But yes, we'll, we'll certainly do a revenue share with anyone, but you're right, Carlos, it's set up as a 50-50 a with our white label partners. Winston's asking about this $1,000. And so this $1,000 down payment is necessary for us to put together the debt portfolio. And it's not a fee, it's, it's, it's a down payment. So what we said, Winston, is that we're gonna sell typically, there, there could be some unique pricing, but normally they're gonna pay 10 cents on the dollar, which is a great, great deal for them. And so with that being said, they're frankly only putting 1% down, but, but they'll need to come up with that 1% down because we're incurring time and effort. So uh, the thousand dollars is due at the time of, of enrollment in the collateral support program. David's asking about questions and, and that's that or I'm sorry about timing and, and that's a good point. So 
frankly, you could be introducing this whenever you would like to your clients. I think it becomes most relevant when you get to module three, because module three is where you're talking to them and teaching them using the materials, the award-winning materials and curriculum we provided you about balance sheets and income statements. And it would start, you could at least plant the seed once you get to module three to say, hey, you know, if, if your balance sheet and, and or income statement doesn't look very strong, you don't look real credible on paper, no worries, we can help you with that. And then once you actually look at their balance sheet and income statement, which you should be helping them upload into Dropbox, that's when it's going to become really obvious. So sure, you, you could pitch this whenever you wanted to pitch in the client process. I know some of you will pitch this to even get access to capital clients, but it's going to happen most naturally in module three. All right, so we have a question from Joseph and, and Joseph's asking about the difference between this and the key person policies. So key person policies can serve as collateral as well, but key person policies are life insurance policies and those are paid out upon the person's death. So I think sometimes people get confused and you shouldn't. You know, the, the, the cash value of a new life insurance policy is usually zero. So you know how much it's going to show on the balance sheet? Zero. Now, do some lenders like to have a key person policy that in case the borrower should die? Of course. And so it's valid and credible. And all those things we've talked about before is true. But a life insurance policy, a key person policy, typically isn't going to serve as collateral if the person is alive, right? Because it pays out when they're dead, if they die. Uh, Carlos is asking, can we offer this as a standalone? And, and yes, we can. And, and frankly, we've packaged it in somewhat more so on the website than in the flyer to do that. Because when you, when you communicate to the client that we're helping them with their three C's, we're helping them add collateral, we're helping them add capacity. In other words, their ability to, to show on paper they can pay back debt because it's income producing receivables, and we also will help them build out their business credit profile. We kind of threw that in, so we, we will do it, of course, but that addresses all three of the C's. So you're right, Carlos, this could be offered as a, as a standalone program, primarily developed to assist our access to capital clients, but it could be standalone. All right, uh, Peggy's asking about putting this on your landing page. Absolutely, you can work with Scott. And if you decide to market this as, as standalone, uh, you can have a standalone landing page or mix it in. That, that's between you and, and, and the technical people. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, let's see. Uh, Marcelo's asking, how is the rest financed? And that's a great point. So we're going to set up a debt instrument with a third-party financing company. It's guaranteed approval for the balance of the amount and the amount of the balance will be determined based upon the price. The price is typically 10% of the amount of collateral transferred. And of course, we'll be able to work with the client to figure out how much collateral, what collateral shortfall, but it's, it's a separate financing agreement for them. Great questions. Uh, Devin asks, how does this work with an equity-based capital raise? Well, it, it's, it's largely the same thing. So let's say, Devin, that, that we're not wanting to go to a bank. We're not wanting to go to Wells Fargo to borrow a quarter of a million dollars. We want to get an equity-based capital raise, money that we don't have to pay back. Well, of course, a stronger balance sheet is going to make us look more credible, more fundable to an equity-based investor, just as it would to an underwriter of a lender. So the, uh, the, the concept is the, is the same. We're helping improve their fundability, improving how they look on paper, making them more credible. Don will ask the monthly payment, and that's a good point. So it, it will depend upon the amount of principal that they finance in their term. So I, I don't have a general answer, but let's say, I guess we could try to come up with an approximation for Donald. So if they need 100,000, 
of collateral. They put 10% down, which is 50-50 with you, Donald, right? So you got 500 in your pocket now, which is not a bad day. So now they're financing 9,000. And let's take $9,000. My calculator pulled up here on my iPhone. Whenever I find it. Okay, so we're going to take $9,000. and divide it they can pick the repayment terms let's say they repay it back over 48 months that would be about 187 dollars and 50 cents a month for the principal of course there'd be some interest on it but uh, the 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 payments donald of course vary based upon how long they want to stretch out the payments and secondly the amount. But the beautiful thing is you got to remember, Donald, these are our income producing assets. So their debt payment would be paid based upon the late fees that are being incurred off the portfolio. So it should actually pay for itself. Thank you for Donald for that. Uh, Latasha is going back and asked what the key person policy. So no, the clients are not required to get the key person policy. Just like if they say, hey, I don't want to do a business plan. They don't have to do a business plan. What you and I are trying to do is, is help them build a, a complete loan package. So we have the best access to the most types of capital, the most amount. But if the client just rejects to do some element of that, it can affect how much money they get, how quickly they get it, and where it comes from, but it, it would not put them in breach of the agreement, unless you have your agreement written differently. All right, let's see what other questions we have. Donald says, thank you. Okay, so what other questions does anyone have? Because this, this is a really big deal, and let me try to summarize why it's a big deal. And if it doesn't seem like a big deal to you, push back on me because... I need to do a better job. What is it? We got to start with what is it that you and I do? What do we do? We help small businesses become more credible so they can access the capital that they want to need to start to grow, to reach their potential. That's what we do as technical advisors. We're not the lenders, right? If you look at your business card, it doesn't say banker on it, does it? I know mine doesn't. We're technical advisors. We're helping people move from where they're at to where they need to be to be able to accomplish their capital raise goals. Of course, we build financial literacy. We build a loan package, but we're, we're, we're changing their credibility so they look more credible on paper, legally and ethically, of course. And so one element that you're going to find frequently that's a barrier is this. Well, this is very attractive to you because you're solving their problem, but it's also going to put $500 in your pocket quickly. So, so think about that. If you're just minimally active as a white label partner, let's say that you're just bringing on eight new clients a month. Chances are most of them, not maybe not all of them, but most of them are going to need an enhancement of their balance sheet. So let's say that, that six out of eight need the collateral support program. So if you were to help those six of the eight get set up, that's an extra $3,000 up front in your pocket. It's almost like base pay and everything else is still coming to you. So I know a few of our key, some of our white label partners, they're struggling a bit that they're, they're either giving up their full-time employment or, or whatever's going on in the world, cash flow's really tight. I'm showing you now how to start generating three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 a month early on in the first month of each client's relationship, in addition to you getting paid off the refundable deposit, in addition to you getting paid off the performance fee, and in addition to the key person policy. You're solving problems and you're making money at the same time. All right, does anyone else have any questions on this? I sent out the collateral support program flyer. All right, so we got a question from from Andre. Andre's asking, can he white label it and charge his own fee structure? Absolutely. So if you want to price it differently, Andre or others, charge more. Obviously, you don't want to use our branding on it because then they would come back and say, well, 
the, the pricing is, is different, but you can certainly white label this under your current white label agreement. You don't have to sign up for anything different. Don't, don't pay anything. And so you could market it at the price point that you want. And so you could mark it up, couldn't mark it down, but you could mark it up, pay us our part, and then you keep, you keep the rest. Rene uh, states very nicely, he, he states, quote, this is a powerful opportunity for business clients to improve their balance sheets and gain credibility to raise capital. And that's, that's absolutely correct. The, uh, Carlos brings up a good point in, in, in terms of being too good to be true. So I think there is the element that we're going to need to build the financial literacy of clients. And that's where module three gets into it, right? Module three, we, we introduce what is a balance sheet? What's an income statement? Because a lot of them don't know that. And then they produce their balance sheet and income statement, otherwise known as profit and loss. So you can upload it in the Dropbox. And that's the first time you're kind of looking at it. Let's draw an analogy. I, I love to, to, well, I like to run. I probably don't love to run, but I like to run. So I run pretty much lunchtime every day. And so with that, you know, am I seeing health benefits of, of running? Sure, but it's probably not, for most people, it's not till you go to the doctor and you see your high cholesterol or your high BMI or whatever that, that negative factor is that gets you realizing, oh, I need to do something different. Maybe I need to run. Well, for your clients, a lot of them really aren't thinking about their balance sheet. They don't know to think about their balance sheet. They may not even have a balance sheet yet. But by going through the four modules in module three, you're educating them about that. They're putting it together. They're, they're including it in the packet in module four. And so it becomes kind of like a negative cholesterol or an ugly cholesterol test, doesn't it? You look down at the balance sheet and you look at their total assets and, and there's nothing or next to nothing. It's like, well, there's an inconsistency client. You're wanting to go borrow a hundred thousand or a quarter of a million or whatever amount you want, but you don't have collateral for that. That's a problem, but it's okay, client. We can fix that. We have what's called the collateral support program that will put the assets legitimately on your balance sheet. And the nice thing is it's income. They are income producing assets. That's also going to go build your income statement, your profit and loss. So you can see how it, it just happens very naturally. But Carlos has got a good point. You're often going to be dealing with clients that don't, that, that do not have the expertise that you have. So if you educate them first and then offer solutions to the problems that are evident in their scenario, it's much better received than just going out and trying to sell them things. But some of you are strong enough business developers, sales professionals. I suspect some of you will just be able to, to, to offer this program as a standalone and help a lot of clients. But normally, it's as you go through the education, you apply that education to the client's business, you get the output of it, like the balance sheet and income statement. If you see that it's weak or we can consult with you, and if we see that it's weak, then this becomes very relevant. All right, any other questions anyone has? This is a big deal. It's up and ready to go. We'll be addressing this organically with your clients once you have their loan package put together. So if you wanted to be passive about this, you would need to do nothing, right? You just enroll clients the way you promised to as a white label partner, at least eight a month. You're working with them through the four modules. You're helping them upload their documents into the Dropbox, and then we look at the balance sheet, and it'll be obvious when there's a need for this. So that's the least involving way. You do nothing extra. We just see that there's a problem and offer a solution. If you wanted to be more proactive, when you get to module three, you could plant the seed more so. You could even get the balance sheet earlier than week four, and then you could introduce this to them if you chose to and get them enrolled early on. If you're wanting to increase your front end income, that would be a smart thing to do, because I'm telling you, most of your clients will benefit from having a stronger balance sheet before going to funding. And we split this 50-50 with you. So you're putting 500 in your pocket up front. May not sound like much, but you're probably putting less than an hour's worth of time in it. And I don't know about you, but if I could make an extra $500 an hour, I'd be working on that, right? 
This is going to be valuable as you're talking to referral partners too, because any referral partner that's sophisticated, that's knowledgeable, is going to know that there's a lot of small businesses that don't get funding because they're not credible enough on paper, just exactly what we've talked about. What you and I can do together is make them more credible, legally, ethically, morally, on paper through the collateral support program. All right, well, we'll get after it. Thanks, everyone. Let us know if you have any questions. We'll see you back tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.